awful enemy combatants. They didn't have the rights of prisoners of war and were beyond the reach of any court. At Guantanamo, Kurnaz says he endured endless months of interrogations, beatings at the hands of soldiers in riot gear, and physical cruelty, which included going without sleep for weeks and solitary confinement for up to a month in cells that were sealed without ventilation or were set up to punish him with extreme conditions. It's dark inside, no lights. And they can punish you in isolation with, uh, by coldness or, or by the heat. They have uh, special air conditions over there, very strong. They can turn it very, very cold or, or very hot. He says it all went on year after year, always the same questions about al-Qaeda and the endless effort to break his will. He heard nothing from the outside and wondered whether anyone knew he was there. Then, in 2004, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Guantanamo prisoners did have the right to lawyers, and to his complete surprise, one day Kurnaz was told he had a visitor. It was Bahar Azmi, an American lawyer. Tell me about your first meeting with Kurnaz. He was chained to a bolt in the floor around his ankle um, and had an absolutely um, enormous beard that had marked the years that he was in detention. He looked um, like someone who had been shipwrecked, which of course, in a sense, he really was. Asmi is a professor of constitutional law at the Seton Hall Law School. He dug into Kurnaz's case and found that the military seemed to have invented some of the charges. Military prosecutors had said one of Kurnaz's friends was a suicide bomber, but the friend turned up alive and well in Germany. How could they have gotten that so wrong? I mean, you're either a suicide bomber or you're not. There's no in-between. This goes to um, the, the utter preposterousness of the government's legal process that they established in Guantanamo, this tribunal system that was supposed to differentiate from enemy combatant uh, and civilian. So in order to justify that he was an enemy combatant, they simply made up an allegation about someone he was associated with. But far worse than the false charges was the secret government file that Asmi uncovered. Six months after Kurnaz reached Guantanamo, U.S. military intelligence had written this. Criminal Investigation Task Force has no definite link or evidence of detainee having an association with al-Qaeda or making any specific threat toward the U.S. At the same time, German intelligence agents wrote their government, saying, USA considers Murat Kurnaz's innocence to be proven. He is to be released in approximately six to eight weeks. How long was Kurnaz kept at Guantanamo Bay after this memo in 2002? Uh, three and a half years. They kept him, Kurnaz says, by inventing new charges. In this makeshift courthouse, Kurnaz claims that a military judge charged that Kurnaz had been picked up near Osama bin Laden's hideout in Afghanistan while fighting for the Taliban. Ironic, since it was the U.S. that flew him to Afghanistan to begin with. Have you ever, in your legal career, run across anything like this? In my legal career, no, but in Guantanamo, no detainee has ever been able to genuinely present evidence before a neutral judge. And so, as absurd as Murat Karnaz's case is, I assure you, there are many, many dozens just as tenuous. And a U.S. federal judge agreed. She ruled the Guantanamo military tribunals violated the prisoner's right to a defense, and she singled out Karnaz's case. We asked the Department of Defense to talk to us about Kurnaz. Instead, they sent us a statement, his allegations unsubstantiated and outlandish, adding that claims that the U.S. military engaged in regular and systematic torture of detainees cannot withstand even the slightest scrutiny. The statement did not address why Kurnaz was held for five years. The break in Kurnaz's case came when the German Chancellor asked President Bush for his release. In August 2006, a plane came to take Kurnaz home. On the way out, 
He told us he was asked to sign a confession that his captors had written for him, saying that he had been Al-Qaeda all along. He refused. On the plane, he was chained and surrounded by soldiers, but by the end of the flight, he was free. There's a picture of you hugging your mother. Tell me about that moment. Uh, she wouldn't let me go. Uh, she wouldn't let me anymore. She just grabbed me and of course she was so happy. She cried and I would, I would go to my father and my brothers also, but she didn't let me and they had to wait. He was 19 when he went in, 24 when he got out. His new wife had divorced him. Kurnaz has written a book just translated into English called Five Years of My Life. He told us he wanted to visit the United States one day, but he can't, because the U.S. still considers him to be an unlawful enemy combatant.